What's up? Um, I want to show you something that we're working on, which I'm kind of excited about. I think it's cool. It's going to be really useful. Um, I think the best way to express this is if you think about it, like you're building a game. Um, and in a game, you will typically have like a, a while loop, right? So this would be a way for you to have things happen over time in your game environment. Um, and you kind of want that to be fully under your control right now in native PHP. There's no way to really do this, not in a reliable way. So let's just think about some of the things that we might want to do here. First of all, there is a scheduler. We set the scheduler to run every minute, like a, the normal, you know, your normal Laravel web application scheduler. And that's fine, but sometimes 60 seconds is too much time. You want things to happen sooner. That's quite true of a, a game like Loop. So we'd, we'd need something else. Um, another example might be, let's say, um, a WebSocket, you know, React PHP type loop. I'm, I'm just focusing on PHP, but it could be like a program written in an entirely other programming language, you know, like different application altogether. But you, you've got this executable that you want to run by the side of your application. And you want your application to be able to communicate with this other process, and you want that other process to be able to communicate back to your application so that your Laravel code can react to what's happening in this other process. Now, you could use things like proc open, pros, no, proc open, um, which is fine. Uh, there's also PCNTL, right? Um, and various derivatives of that. But there are problems with both of those. So first one, PCNTL, we'll get this out of the way. Basically, it doesn't work cross-platform. It will probably never work on Windows, unfortunately. So that's out of the picture. We can obviously do things like proc open, which is effectively, you know, just like shell exec but with a little bit more fanciness. The problem with proc open, whilst you can do things like connecting to its standard in and standard out, if you lose the connection to the process, a couple of things sort of break and fall over. One is that you can no longer communicate with it. So let's say in this first request, I proc open my um, command, you know, whatever it is, the program that I'm, I want to execute. And then on a subsequent request, now I don't know anything about it. And the typical thing that you would do is maybe like capture the uh, process ID. So you might, I mean, this isn't right. This is just pseudocode. But, you know, let's say you capture the process ID from the process. And then you check to see if that process is still running. That's not great because there's no guarantees that the process ID hasn't been recycled and it's actually some other process. It's not the one that you started. It could be something else entirely. Although that's kind of unlikely in, in a lot of cases, it could happen. Um, the other thing is that it doesn't let you reconnect to like that process is standard in and standard out and standard error. So you've got really no control over what it's doing anymore. You've lost connection. You could build some stuff to like try and reconnect to the file descriptors and it it's all a little bit weird and ugh, it can be gross it may not work very well cross platform there's all sorts of problems basically you don't want to do this and then the other thing is it's kind of orphaned and when your application quits there's no guarantees that that process is going to quit too these things, these resources that you're like starting as part of your application would now start to clog up the user's machine and you have no insight and over oversight over them. Yeah, you don't want to do this basically. So what do we do instead? Well, this is what we're coming up with in native PHP. So we'd have a child process. Um, uh, if I could spell, then we'd get this right.
and we can start one of these. I'm doing this in my native app service provider because I wanted to start as soon as my application boots up. The cool thing about this is I give it an alias, so let's call this one the main loop, right? I'm thinking game terminology. So my main loop is going to be some application that I start that's going to live for as long as my actual application is running um, and it's going to maybe pass information backwards and forwards between what it's doing off to the side and what my main application is doing, you know, rendering views and responding to requests and handling data and all of that kind of thing. It makes sense for us to have these things as separate processes so they don't block each other. Um, but then we, we need to have all of the benefits that we said we lose when we're trying to do things like proc open or PCNTL. So this is what we've done in native PHP. We've wrapped this up in a way that lets us keep tabs on the processes like much better than we can do in PHP. So we give our processes a name. This is the only process that can exist with this name. So it's a unique alias that we give to each process that we want to run. You could run as many as you want. As long as they've got a unique name, then you're going to end up with all these processes. So, you know, go easy. But uh, let's say this one is actually, it's just a React PHP thing. I'm going to demo that with an artisan command because I think it's kind of easier. But you, you might have, you know, a, a well-built, React PHP um, process script somewhere and you just want to boot that up. So let's kind of imitate that with just an artisan command for now. So I'm going to say it will need to run PHP, right? Because it's in this case, I'm, I want to run some script through PHP. And when I've shipped my app to the user, I, maybe they don't have PHP installed. So I can't just do PHP you know, artisan, um, I don't know, main loop, whatever it's going to be. I need to swap the PHP bit out for the PHP that we ship with our application. So for that, I can just do PHP binary and that will work nicely across platforms. Um, and then because I'm using artisan in this case, I need artisan as the, the next argument in the command. Then the final one is going to be my main loop. The, the actual command that I want to run. Let's now create this command. So we want to php artisan, whoop, make command, I'm going to call it main loop. Cool, so we've got our main loop. I'm going to change this just because I've already called it main loop elsewhere. And then in here, because I want this to run forever, or at least until it's been told to shut down, I am just going to do a while true. So this will keep this script running forever. Just keeping it really simple. We're going to sleep for one second and we'll just output the time. So we should see the time counting up somewhere. When, when we run PHP artisan native serve, we should see this line coming out every second, basically. Um, so let's run that and see what happens. Starting, that's the app booted up. And there we go. So we can see the process, we, we got notified that the process started and then every second it's receiving a message and the message is the time, what we've output. So that's nice. Um, and what will happen eventually is that your, your main application, the main Laravel application, will be able to receive these events um, and handle them however you want. And what's really cool is because it's essentially your own custom loop and doing whatever you want to do, you can make it work as fast or as slowly or anything as you want. Like here, we can make use of things like you sleep, and instead of it being one second, we might want to do it for every, let's say, 100 milliseconds Oop. instead, right? So, I mean, this is going to be a bit boring because we're just going to see it repeated nine or ten times, but 
Oh well. It's a demo. Who cares? There we go. Every hundred milliseconds now. Um, so that's fun. And that was really easy. So yeah, you'll soon be able to do really cool things with this uh, child process. Um, so there's uh, another thing that I kind of want to demonstrate is that we can send it a message. Um, let's do that in a different part of the application. So just for just for giggles, um, I'm going to do uh, native Laravel. Ugh. Um, and it was the facades child process. Cool. And we're going to say message. Let's say, well, we need to tell it which process we want to send a message to. So we're going to send a message to the main loop. And we want the message to let's just say hello main loop. Cool. Okay. So we'll save that. Now in our application, if I refresh this page, it's going to run this code, right? So it should send this to our process. Bear in mind, we haven't actually rebooted anything here. We've not stopped the dev server. We've, we've not refreshed anything. This is just, I've edited the code. My application is running and I'm just refreshing the page just as I would do in a browser. So I hit command R and it reboots. Now, the thing is we've sent that event, but it hasn't really registered here because we're not doing anything with it. So, but it didn't error. So that's a good sign. Something worked. Um, but let's see how we can actually just handle that. So in our event loop this time, uh, I'm going to push this back to a second because this is too, too fast. Um, we want to just basically get standard in. So we should be able to do that. So, I'm just going to put that here like this and we should be able to see it and then hopefully it doesn't fly by because there's not too many events. This is a lot of events. So let's stop the whole thing. We'll restart that. We should see it come in straight away because the main window is going to boot our view that runs that script. But let's see what happens. Ah, look, message received from process main loop. So we, what we've done, this is a little bit weird actually, it's not quite great, but um, because I'm echoing out what I received, it's sending it back to the main process. It's saying a message was received from our main loop process, which is true, but it demonstrates that the main loop process received the message and was able to do something with it. And the thing that it did with it is just send it back. So we could do something like if, uh, well, let's just pro get the input. So we can just say that and then say if input. And then we'll echo right back at, yeah. These processes, once we've started them in this way, they're not going to auto refresh. They're not going to restart themselves when we make changes because of the way that they're started as part of the the main Electron application. So we will need to reboot the entire thing to refresh changes. So we have to stop and restart, but it's relatively quick. As you can see, it doesn't take too long to get things booted back up. And so instead of just responding with the the message uh, that was sent, we're responding with a different one. The fundamental thing here it is very widely applicable. It's, you know, your standard system input and output into process communication. You can take this to a whole other level. Like in your, if you, if you were building a, like a network application, for example, you could have a long running uh, process here that just opens a socket on the network and expects to receive some kind of input. Um, so you could open a port and 
you could have other applications then um, sending messages to the, the machine that this, your app is running on and your um, side process that is, has opened this socket connection, you know, the network connection, can receive that input and then essentially forward the input to your application. So that's a little bit more convoluted and tricky to demonstrate right now, but the the possibilities of that are really quite cool, and I think it's going to be uh, interesting. I'm I'm definitely excited to see what people start building with this. Um, so I hope you're as excited as I am about child processes, and you can see some of the potential that comes from that. If you're not sure, reach out to me on the Discord. I'll be happy to talk through it in more detail. Um, this is coming soon. Uh, it's almost ready, as you can see. There's a little bit more that we want to do. Um, but once this is complete, I think uh, we'll get this out there as quickly as we can. And it's going to be a, a really useful feature. Um, and, and I think, from my point of view, a critical one for us to have solved for people before we move into a beta or beta, depending on how you say it. Thanks for watching. See you soon.